Okay? All right. We are ahead of schedule. <laughs> this is wonderful. So um, I have the honor to uh, present you uh, Martin Owens. Uh, he's a freelance software developer at working at Inkscape. For, yeah. For at? On. On. <laughs> on Inkscape, yeah. And um, he really wants to share uh, his story about SVG, browsers versus editors. Yep. And so please welcome Martin with a applause. And then we'll have a wonderful coffee break, OK? Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Martin. Um, I'm an Inkscape developer. And uh, the way I describe it is I'm one of the open source developers who isn't hired by any company. I am instead directly funded by designers who basically pay me to program Inkscape. Um, so if you're confused about why I can't say I work for Inkscape, it's because Inkscape is not a company, so it, d it doesn't have people that work for it, if that makes sense. Um, but today, I want to talk about uh, SVG. And we're going to talk about single developer syndrome. Now, I apologize if this is a slightly developer fo fo focused. I wasn't entirely sure what kind of an audience I would have, but I'll describe it, because I think designers will have uh, the same kinds of issues, which is basically, if you have a, uh, a project where only a single person is involved with its creation, it's going to have all kinds of very interesting, um, if you say, design considerations, right? It's going to be a bit weird. It probably works, but it contains weird stuff. This happens in code all of the time. You find a project that maybe it's a company, but it could be open source. A person has spent five years of their lives, 10 years of their lives crafting this beautiful thing. But then as a contributor, you go in, and their code is hard. It's hard to get into. Um, so what I recommend to some of my clients when they hire me or to open source pro pro projects when they talk to me is that you get other people involved, and you get them involved soon. Because multiple brains, multiple um, people will basically knock off all of the corner cases, all of the edges, all of the like weirdnesses that each individual brings. And that way, you get a more rounded and wholesome uh, design, I would say. Like, but this works in programming as well. right? We need other programmers to be involved because we need code that other p people can un understand. OK. So we also have a single program syndrome. This is similar. And this happens when you have a single program that uses its own file for format. And I like to think of this as basically a similar kind of problem. It's true that, say, for instance, with Adobe Illustrator, you have a massive uh, cooperation with lots of individuals involved with programming it. But at the end of the day, you only have one program that's opening and saving AI files. That for format is going to contain some very weird things in it. And we know this is the case, because when we've done reverse engineering on things like AI files, you see some crazy stuff. Um, so what we want to do is basically we want to um, files that are used by multiple pro programs uh, for exactly the same reasons. Now, these are examples that are actually pretty good file for for formats, I, I would say. But they are uh, programs that have their own file for for format. And it's worth knowing the amount of discipline that's required in these pro pro projects. And I want to take my hat off to them all, because it's hard to keep these for formats on track when you're the only pro program that can read and write them. So Inkscape, though, we use SVG. And we use this deliberately, because we don't want a situation where you know, the file is not editable or openable by anything else. And SVG is a uh, World Wide Web consor Consortium standard for file for from format. It's also the format that's used by PenPot. Another head hat off, because I fully respect Pe PenPot's decision to use SVG. <laughs> now, SVG is both a blessing and a curse, right? So the good thing is, is that it's stable, right? It's 
basically the st standard that we use to today is the same 2001 specification, right? It's changed very little, but it's very stubborn. It is a essentially a standard that is not progressing very quickly. And so programs that want to do editing of SVG have to be very inventive to somehow take the SVG from 2001 and make it do 2023 fun functionality. So what we do in Inkscape is we use this thing called XML, because that's what SVG is in. And XML has this unique feature of being able to extend it using namespace spaces. It's basically an additional format that sits on top of the XML SVG itself. So we have plain SVG, and then we add on our own um, data, and we get an Inkscape SVG. The reason why we do this is because we want to preserve the editability of the document. So when you reopen that SVG in Inkscape, the multiple pages still exist, the guidelines still exist, the grids still exist, all of the things that are not visible on the screen, um, those are still editable. If you save as a plain SVG, you will lose all of those things. So our policy in the Inkscape pro project is that the SVG file that we produce will always be renderable, or at least we hope so, in web br browsers. Web browsers generally focus directly on the World Wide Web Consortium specification itself. In fact, they are the most powerful players in deciding what is in that specification. The Inkscape pro project has been involved with the W3C for a while now in order to try and progress the file for format. But it is true that basically web br browsers rule. And so we have to consider the fact that our SVG needs to work in a web br browser, right? And in, especially since Pen PenPot is a web browsing program, it's going to need uh, web browsers to support SVG so the pro program works, right? So, oh, these are the extra things that we generally store. Uh, one of the most interesting thing is live paths. These are pieces of fun functionality that allow you to do all sorts of cra crazy things. But we actually have to store that in SVG as a regular set of paths so that it can be rendered in the web browser correctly. But then we have to store extra metadata so that it's still editable. OK. So we do have a problem with the W3C. They tend to ignore basically everything we ask them for. So we say, hey, can we have guides? Can we have multiple pages? Can we have you know, whatever it is? They say no, generally. And that is understandable, right? Their focus is on web browsers. It's not on editability. It's not on designers creating things. It's on webs, websites showing you things. And so, so far, we have been, we've had to maintain our own format for almost everything that is not in that 2001 specification. But what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to move to having something that's not Inkscape specific. And the reason for this is because of what I talked about at the, at the beginning, which is that if Inkscape is designing essentially its own editability, um, it's going to have lots of weirdnesses in it. And we want to have a situation where these editable SVG files that designers produce can be opened in other pro programs, and those other programs will understand multiple pages, guidelines, grids, and other editable elements, and at least have a straight shot at being able to use them without having to cope with Inkscape's own internal weirdnesses. So I'll give you a good example of that. Um, there's, a, there's an animation pro program. Uh, it was a website. Uh, a, a programmer ba basically put together a tool to create uh, animated SVGs. It's a nice little tool. And it had to essentially uh, dig into Inkscape's code base, understand what Inkscape was doing when it, comes to, when it came to layers and then re-implement layers in its own pro program in JavaScript, right? And it would help if Inkscape's uh, internal form format was documented. But I think it would help even more if we had a, a more standard for from format. And as I talked about with W3C, uh, uh, I don't think that W3C are going to be able to do that work. Um, so I think it's probably about time that we as the open source community, we got together and decided for ourselves that some of these file formats should be standardized by us. And we should take the time to basically create spaces in our community to design uh, the file for formats that we want so that designers will always have re re reproducible and re-editable uh, elements. And um, 
thank you very, very much for watching this talk. And uh, I'm open to questions. I will also answer questions about Inkscape generally, if you want. Oh, okay. Hi. So I have a question. So is editable SVG meant to be a spec with the W3C, or are you looking at another organization? So I am bringing this here so that I can uh, start a conversation about where such a spec specification should find a good home. Um, the W3C might be an idea, but as long as the focus is on editability, I think that still might work. If it's a, a focus on SVG itself, I think it will be buried. So find, finding the right home is important. If you have ideas, Mo, I would be uh, interested in them. Sounds good. <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind is how, like, grease pencil. So people also use vectorial artwork for animation. I wonder, and then something like Blender could, could also, you know, benefit from being able to export to edit both interchangeable um, SVG files. Do you see animation somehow? Uh, in the roadmap for what Inkscape or SVG might be able to provide, even for the W3C, because maybe people want to animate on the web with uh, SVG? Yeah, so um, from what we understand about the, the W3C's position on animation in SVG is that they hope to get rid of it, right? They want to get rid of animation in SVG, but what they want to do is they want to replace it with CSS animation. And the problem is, is that CSS animation is nowhere near as functionally equivalent as what we call Smile or SMIL uh, SVG animations. So we're, fight, we're trying to fight back because even though Inkscape doesn't support animations itself, uh, many of our users use Inkscape and then use other tools to animate them. And we think it's important in the specification to have a functionally complete and not web-focused tool. Like the document for format to us is important. Um, and I could definitely see if, for instance, Blender was to be involved in such a, uh, a, an organizational effort that we would uh, make sure that animation was a part of that standard s setting so that we could save all of the information that we, we needed. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> OK. Hello, hello. So uh, this, uh, this is the end of the first uh, section of the morning. We're now going to enjoy a coffee break. Uh, we'll be back uh, 11.30. 11.30, yes. So, it's, uh, so we have you know, to, to chill out, have some more coffee, fruit, all of that. So online uh, viewers, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, be, we'll be telling you exactly how, you know, when exactly we are coming back. So now, just again, relax, have some coffee, uh, interact with each other, go and get uh, speakers and answer your uh, uncon you know, unconventional questions, and see you in 50 minutes. <laughs>